Hey, it's John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and it's The Entrepreneurial You, the show for dedicated and passionate Caribbean entrepreneurs seeking daily inspiration, brought to you by author, speaker, and award-winning entrepreneur, Henneka Wakis porter You must be prepared to ignite. Coming up on this episode of The Entrepreneurial You... When we use systems, when we have a plan in place, a set of steps that we can follow over and over again, it helps us get to where we want to go faster. That's the beauty of it is it could be as simple as you want it to be, or it could be as complex as you want it to be. Hi, I'm Hanika watkis Porto, your inspirational leader and host of the Entrepreneurial You podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Jamaica Stock Exchange. And now let's go to today's episode. On episode 65 of the Entrepreneurial You podcast is the creator, engager, and implementer over at Entrepreneurs on Fire, an award-winning podcast where John Lee Dumas interviews inspiring entrepreneurs every Monday and drops value bombs every Thursday. She's also the host of the podcast, Kate's Take, and co-author of the podcast journal, Idea to Launch in 50 Days. She is passionate about helping entrepreneurs create freedom in their business and life through developing systems and processes that can help their business scale and grow. I'm referring to the amazing lady on fire, Kate Erickson. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial You podcast, Kate. Thank you so much, Henneke. I love that lady on fire. (laughs) (laughs) You're burning. And of course, from where I'm at right now, I mean, it's very hot. I'm in sunny Jamaica, of course, that's where I live. And um, yay. And guess where I'm recording from? I'm actually recording from the Couples Resort, Couples San Susie in Ocheris, Jamaica. So I'm having an amazing time just recording my podcast here. They're showing me some love and I'm showing them back some love too. (laughs) Beautiful. Oh, I can picture the scene so well. (laughs) Oh oh my gosh. I know that you and JG, um, perhaps you need to, you know, after you hear the deals and stuff that they have, you perhaps want to come down, take a break and come to sunny Jamaica, you know? (laughs) <laughs> that would be awesome. I would love to. We actually just got back from a weekend in the DR. So mm-hmm. we've been doing a little bit of island hopping. <laughs> right, right, right. Amazing stuff. And that's that's really what, you know, what's about what we do. We can, you know, take that kind of a break. And even when we're like when we're on a break, we can actually still be working and it doesn't feel like work, for example. You know, I'm I'm recording in my in my room, in my um suite right now. And in my swimsuit, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't be like work any at all. Yes, and that's the beauty of it, right? And that's I know that we're going to be getting into it today during our chat, but it's a beautiful thing about setting up systems in your business so you have that freedom. Exactly. So my question to you before we get into our systems and all of that, when you hear or when you think about Jamaica, what comes to mind? That's my warm-up question. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> well, I could see the flag so clearly. And I think about Bob Marley. Ah, okay. One love, yeah. one heart. <laughs> Let's get together and feel all right. Go kids. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now we got that out of the way. Let's get down to business. And we're going to be looking at developing systems and processes that can help business scale and grow. That's your forte. That's your your baby and we want to you know go into that now why do we even need systems anyway why not just go with the flow uh because when we go with the flow this is when we start to feel overwhelm when we start to feel like we don't have control of the direction that we're headed um, I like to think of systems and I hear people put it like this a lot which I think is just a great visual for it it's like if you were to jump in your car and you're about to drive to a destination you've never been to before what are you going to do you're going to take out your google maps or your tom tom or whatever system you use to get from point a to point b you're going to put in that destination address and it's going to give you the steps that you need to take in order to get there. You're going to go straight for one mile, turn right, then you're going to go around a curve and you turn left. That makes it super simple for us to get exactly where we want to go. That's how I like to think of systems and planning is that when we use systems, when we have a plan in place, a set of steps that we can follow over and over again, it helps us get to where we want to go faster. 
And for the, you know, you have some persons and um, I think sometimes I fall into that category and it's hard for me to get myself into a system. And, and when I do get into a system, oh, it's beautiful, but I'm the kind of person who likes to, I, I don't like the regimen of structure sometimes. It feels like, oh my gosh, there's a weight on my shoulder. Um, how can we, you know, persons who are like me kind of navigate that and not see it as a burden, but rather something as a tool to equip us for success? Well, Henneke, I've heard that a lot and I feel like it's a common uh, feeling or view towards systems for a lot of entrepreneurs because as entrepreneurs, we're like free spirited and we have these big visions and these dreams and we don't necessarily want to be the ones behind the scenes doing all that work that, like you said, it kind of feels like you have like this box around it, right? That's usually what somebody like me, an implementer would do for an entrepreneur. And so I can definitely understand and see why for a lot of us, it feels like maybe it's too heavy or maybe it's not the route that we want to go. But, you know, something that you said when you were talking about that, this is what I always turn to when I talk about using systems. And it's that feeling that you have when you're using a system that is just like so smooth and so good, right? You're following this flow. Everything's falling into place. You're working super efficiently. You're not second guessing yourself. You have peace of mind that what you're doing, the step that you're taking are bringing you one step closer to your goal. And so whenever I, and and I do this all the time too, I think, oh gosh, it's going to take me so long to set this system up. And I don't really feel like setting up this system right now because I feel like I could just do the thing faster the way that I usually do it. But once we have that system in place, or even as we're working towards putting that system in place, it's important to think of that feeling that you're going to have the next time you get to do that thing with a system already in place, how much of it might potentially be automated, how much of it you could potentially delegate to somebody else. And knowing that your system is going to be working for you versus you working for your business or in your business, rather, just remember that feeling. Yeah. So working on your business rather than in your business. Mm, You said something very profoundly in a very simple way. And it's that about peace of mind. I know there is a guilt that comes with when you're not using systems, I find like when you don't have a structure, for example, and if I get up today and I'm just working and just doing things okay I'm just working on a project today and I didn't have it in my plan from yesterday for today there is a sense of guilt that comes with just with doing one thing I'm like oh my gosh it's all it's as though I'm wasting time doing this thing when I should be doing something else but when we are systemized and we have a structure in place then I find that I don't have that feeling of guilt and there there comes a lot more peace of mind I like that. I've never thought of it like that before, but it's so true. (laughs) When we talk about freedom, how, I mean, not freedom necessarily, but systems, how elaborate of a setup are we talking about? So systems, that's the beauty of it, is it could be as simple as you want it to be, or it could be as complex as you want it to be. There's loads of different software programs out there and all this fancy stuff that you could do with systems. But honestly, some of my best performing systems that I've created are literally laid out in a checklist and that's it. It's just a checklist that's helping me every single time I do something. Maybe I do that thing daily, so I do it pretty often. Or maybe it's something that I only do once a week, once every other week. In which case it becomes maybe a little bit difficult for me to remember every step I'm supposed to take or to remember like that one little step of when I'm going into my website and I'm getting into the coding aspect of it, I'm not a coder. So, you know, I have maybe a little video tutorial that helps remind me of exactly where I need to go and what I need to do. Sometimes those super simple systems are ones that can be most powerful. It's just, you can kind of think of it like your little aid that's helping you remember the step that you're supposed to take and how to make things function the way that you want them to. Hmm, Or something even as simple as a freedom journal or master journal, you know, Um, I am an advocate for those. So (laughs) I find them quite useful. And, you know, even things like just recently I learned, I didn't know how to do it before. I learned about um, mail merge using, using mail merge in Google. 
um, to ah. do emails. Like I'm sending out a ton of emails, right? And mm-hmm. I just, just do a template, one template, and it goes out to 50 persons at a time. If you're using the freemium, <laughs> the freemium yeah. version, it goes it per day. It goes up to 50 persons, uh, 50 emails per day. And you can go 250 persons emails if you're sending, if you're using the paid version. So little things like those. And there are other tools that I use. So what are some of the tools that you use, Kate, um, for things like that? Uh, Well, when you mentioned that about Google, I automatically thought of another um, resource that they have called Canned Responses. Canned Responses. Mm. uh Uh-huh. Do you use those? No, I'm hearing about it for the first time. Uh, It's kind of like what you're talking about. It helps you create like an email template, only you're not necessarily doing a mail merge where you're sending it out to, you know, 50, 100 people at the same time. But for example, uh, one canned response that I have is we have a lot of people reach out and maybe they'll ask, hey, um, Kate, would you be a guest on my podcast? Or um, is, is there any way that I could create a guest post for your website? And so because I get a lot of these requests repetitively, and I'm sure that you get a lot of these same types of requests as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, created a, a, yeah I've created a canned response in my Gmail. So every time I hit reply, I just pull up that canned response response and you know I'll put something personal in there at the top but a majority of that email it's a template I'm going to respond with you know maybe a scheduler link where somebody could book me for a podcast episode or I'm going to send out information on how to submit a guest post for our site so you know those are automation that's an automation tool along with boomerang yes, which is I was also about a to talk about boomerang. Add-on. I love boomerang mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> I love it I use it multiple 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 times a day and And, um, you know, these are perfect examples of automation tools that can really help us save a lot of time. And uh, we talk about, you know, and there's so much, I mean, you you have virtual assistants. There are so many other tools that, you know, we can use. And I'm sure that we we may be talking about some more as we go through. Because, you know, when when you think about your your emails that you can, or your, your social media posts, for example, that you can schedule to go out at a later time and, there's just so much that you can do right now. So it's it's not even so much about posting, for example, in social media, I find these days, but it's more about the engagement because you, you automate, you can automate, 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 but you know, after that you engage to get the result that you want. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what are some of, because we're going to be going into when we, we're going to, in our second segment, we're going to be talking about transitioning from employee to an entrepreneur and the mindset and everything that will, you know, that, that goes along with that and what needs to be shifting and so on. But we can at this point talk about one or two more tools that we can use to automate, you know, and systemize in a very, in a very simple way, but having a profound impact. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Another tool that I love using, I use it for project management and task management. And what, what I love about it is it not only helps me stay organized, but I could even create like a system or a process within this software to where I'll say if I'm creating our monthly income report, I just go into the software. So the software is called Asana. And again, it's a task and project management tool. And so I can create a project for my monthly income report that I create for our website. And within that project, I'm going to have each of the steps that I have to take. I can assign it to other team members. So if there are parts of that that I want to delegate to somebody else, I can assign it to somebody else. I can give things due dates. We can communicate back and forth. So like if there's a step that I need to do in order for my virtual assistant to be able to take on part of that, I can communicate with her within the software. So Asana is a really great tool that I use a lot. Um, Also Text Expander, which is a short key uh, text tool that you can use um, sort of like I was talking about with the canned responses. But with Text Expander, you can create keyboard shortcuts for any type of like uh, word, sentence, paragraph. So anything that you're typing out repeatedly, like Annika, when you and I connected and, you know, I'm sure I, I sent over my bio right. instead of, you know, having to sit there and type out or copy and paste my bio from someplace. I just type three keys on my keyboard and Text Expander expands it into my entire bio. So it's a really, really great tool for things that, you know, you're repeating over and over again. My email address, I have a text expander for my email address, for my name, 
for my podcast description, you know, you name it. I have tons of short keys that I can use to be able to quickly get somebody information without me having to use a ton of time doing it. Oh, wow. That I can, I know that I'm going to check that out. That sounds so cool because we spend mm-hmm. so much time, like I have like a little note. I, am, I, am, I know I need to transfer into something else, into Evernote or something like that. But I keep using the regular notepad and I have a ton of stuff on that. And each time I have to switch my window and I have to go and copy and paste and all of Oh, yeah. you're gonna love text expander. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna check it out, and I'm going. I, I'm going to sign up. I'm going to become a fan. I'm going to take a break right here. Before I get into the break, I just want to read a review from Dr. Don McDonald from Canada. And he says, this podcast is full of great tips and pointers to live the life you've always wanted. I recommend you take a listen. Great job. So keep the reviews coming. Peak performers, keep them coming. You could very well hear it read in the podcast. So let me take a break. Let's go to a break. Listen up. If you are based in Jamaica, this is for you. The world needs your voice. It's as simple as that. So create your own podcast. Visit HennekaWatkinsporter.com and sign up now to your podcasting workshop. Increase your network and your net worth by connecting with global guests and an audience from all over the world. Hurry up. Spaces are limited. So sign up now at HennekaWatkinsporter.com and be part of the movement and ahead of the game. We needed to raise capital. But our experience with local financial institutions was that they were cautious and slow to act, and interest rates were far too high. We had real concerns about financing our business through outside equity investors and the possibility of interference. Could we get a fair valuation for our business? We had our own ideas about the business and its value. Should I go the traditional route of bank financing or should I try the Jamaica Stock Exchange? So we made a call and experienced transformation of our business through conversations. I'm John Mafood, CEO of Jamaican Teas, and we're listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Give us a call today at 876-967-3271 to begin your transformation through conversation. We want to see your company listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Welcome back. And if you've just joined us, of course, I'm having a conversation with Kate Erickson. She's creator, engager, and implementer at EO Fire, Entrepreneur on Fire. So she is the lady on fire. That's how I describe her. And we're having a great conversation. We're talking about systemizing, just developing system, systems and processes that can help businesses scale and grow. Because, I mean, everything in this day and age is really competing for our time. And the more systems we have in place, the more peace of mind we have. And with better peace of mind, then our productivity, of course, increase so here we are we're continuing hi kate welcome back <laughs> thank you hanika i'm very much enjoying our chat yes for those who are in in, in the place of transitioning from employee to entrepreneur because that's that's really the that, that's kind of a tricky part i remember when i just quit my job perhaps it took me years <laughs> to fully transition into uh, an entrepreneur mentally because you know you're you're always thinking maybe because you've always worked as an employee then you constantly think like an employee sometimes and you forget that hey you know you're not just working for yourself or working in a business you re- you really ought to be working on your business so you're not you're not employed to your business you are the person that is running it so what are some of the things to be considered as it relates to mindset and, and, and having that shift? Yeah, you know, I can totally relate to all of that. I felt the exact same way um, when I left my corporate job and I tried to start my own business and I thought all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I was really good at doing what somebody else told me to do, but mm-hmm. I don't know how <laughs> to make these things up for myself. <laughs> um, and so that was a, you know, that was a long transition and it could feel uh, very, like you're very alone um, because, you know, you're used to maybe being in an office setting where you have collaboration and you have different departments in the office who support you and you could call somebody to ask a question. And so I think one of the biggest things for me in that transition was really finding a community of like-minded people who I could go to for support, who I could ask questions to, who were on the same path as me. And, you know, whether that be people who are just starting out on their entrepreneurial journey as well, so that they can, you know, just 
confirm that you're not alone, which can in and of itself be very comforting sometimes. But you know, to also surround yourself with people who have already been where you are, who are ahead of you now, because they'll have great insights and feedback that they can share with you in order to help you get to that next step get over that roadblock or that hump in the road. And um, yeah, I mean, community for me was just one of the biggest things because otherwise in your mind, you know, you could tell yourself a lot of things, um, a lot of them not very nice things when you're frustrated and struggling. So having those people around you that can help build you up is so huge. Exactly. And no doubt we can segue right back into where we begin, uh, setting up mm-hmm. systems from the get go. Now, what are some of the, the steps or things to be considered in setting up a system for early stage entrepreneurs? So at that stage, you know, we, we've talked about some things earlier that we can do, but in terms of more of a checklist per se, you're a checklist person, I know. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the things to be considered? So absolutely. I'll go through just a four-step process right now. This will help you set up any system in your business. And I always like to start by saying, don't overwhelm yourself with thinking that you have to set up systems for everything. Every system that we've created in our business has just been one at a time. But I know it can be overwhelming because you do a lot of stuff every single day in your business, right? So the very first step of the four steps is to take inventory in your business. And all this means is that you take out a sheet of paper, you use your favorite online note taking system, whatever's best for you, and you just write down everything that it is you work on in a day. So let it follow you around for a week. A week is like a good testing period for you to really see what it is you're spending your time doing. Not only is this going to allow you to identify maybe things that you're wasting your time on, frankly, you don't need to be working working on those things, or is going to help you identify the things that you're doing on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. And those things that you're doing on a daily basis, that's really low hanging fruit to be able to create a system around it. Because something that you do over and over and over again, chances are there are going to be ways for you to automate, delegate, or batch parts of that. So step number one is to take inventory. Once you've taken inventory and you've identified just one thing that you want to start with, we're creating one system at a time. So if you take one of those systems, you're just, or one of those tasks, I'm sorry, you're going to write out the steps for every time that you do that. So no matter you chose checking email, um, checking my Facebook group, um, maybe uh, checking comments on my blog, Uh, creating opt-in pages, whatever that one thing that you selected from your inventory, you want to just sit down and write out the steps that you take every single time you do that thing. So you're just getting super, super granular about if I am checking my Facebook group, I'm going to Facebook, I'm going to the tab, uh, the nav bar on the left, I'm selecting groups, I'm finding the group that I want to go into. Once I get in the group, I'm checking for member requests. After I check for member requests, I scan the group to make sure that there's no spammy posts in there that I'm going to delete. After that, I check for any questions. So you get the point. You're really just going to literally write out every single step that you do. (laughs) (laughs) So that's step number two. (laughs) Okay, so step number three, that's when you're going to look at the list of steps that you have written out and you're going to find efficiencies within that. You're going to find things that you can automate. You're going to find things that you could delegate and you're going to find things that you could batch. Now, any one system could be made up of all three of those things, or it could just be one thing. It could be two of them. And the way that I like to distinguish these three things apart from each other is something that you automate is going to be something that you could use a software or tool in order to help you. So as an example, maybe using something like Hootsuite or Meet Edgar, that would be um, to schedule out like a tweet or a Facebook post or whatever it might be. That would be automation. Now, anything that you're going to delegate is going to be something you're going to give to somebody else, a virtual team member, a contractor, or something like that. Anything that you batch is going to be something that requires you. So, Hanukkah, of course, you're not going to tell somebody else to be the host of your podcast. That Absolutely not. You. Like, this is your podcast. <laughs> right? so, so, those are the parts that you're going to batch. You're going to do them 
all consecutively in one time block versus over a spread out period of time because then you save yourself from context switching and wasting loads of time. And then finally, that fourth step is to document it. So all you've done all this work, you've taken inventory, you've written out the steps for the system you want to create, you found those efficiencies, automate, delegate, batch, and now you're going to document it somewhere so that next time you go to do that thing, bam, you've got your system. Wow, 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 wow. That's amazing. And that's, I'm sure that has proven very efficient for you and, and you know, and the entire team at EOFire. And it has increased, I'm sure, your productivity. Uh, so kudos to you and the entire Thank team. <laughs> you. Yes, it's been amazing. It's been a total game changer in our business. Right. Um, this is, that's pretty much it. We're going to just ask you, Kate, to share some information about where we may find you. And I'm not sure if you have a giveaway for our audience members. If not, that's quite all right. Um, so we're going to ask you to, while, while I wrap up this interview, because after that, let me tell you, I'm still at Couples, right? And I'm going to be heading out tonight for their beach buffet and their showtime. Ooh. They're having a Jamaican night, a Jamaican party. Yay! <laughs> oh, delicious. I Indeed. wish I was there. I know, right? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So go right ahead, Kate, and share where our peak performance can get in touch with you. Yes, absolutely. So everything that John and I do is over at eofire.com. I love hearing feedback and responses from people who tune in to interviews just like this one, Henneke, to hear our conversation, to learn about systems. So if you want to shoot me an email, my email is kate, K-A-T-E, at eofire.com. And if you like what you heard about systems, but you want to take a super deep dive into that, I created an entire season around creating systems in your business. So it's totally free content on our blog and on my podcast. And you can find all of that over at eofire.com forward slash season and the number two. Amazing. Thank you so much, Kate. That's Kate Erickson at EOFire. She's creator. She's um, implementer. She is engager. Uh, she's the life of the party. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, Hanukkah. It's been great chatting. You've been thinking about taking a break for so long. Now it's time for you to stop thinking about it and just do it. And Couples Resort, they're making it easy for you to do that right now. Their summer offer is $350 US instant air credit. Or take advantage of their fall deal where you get a six-night free. Local persons in Jamaica, stay tuned for amazing Gustavo's deals to be announced soon. So go to couples.com slash special offers. That's couples.com slash special special offers. Take that break. You deserve it. Thank you so much for listening to The Entrepreneurial You. If you enjoy this podcast, please tell a friend or rate and review us in Apple Podcast. To learn more about the podcast, please go to hennikawatkisporter.com. And of course, before I head out, I have to say a big thank you to all our stakeholders who made Leadercast Kingston such a tremendous success. Leadercast Kingston was brought to you by The Entrepreneurial You in association with the RJ Glino Communications Group and our sponsors, Exim Bank Jamaica, Pear Tree Press, Jamaica Public Service Company, Jamaica Stock Exchange, Stocks and Securities Limited, NCUFM, and the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce. Now, that was a very special our relationship because with the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, Leadercast Kingston was able to name our first leader worth following. We went in search of someone based on the mantra of Leadercast to develop leaders worth following. And with the partnership of the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, Leadercast Kingston identified Valerie Grant, who is the CEO of Geotech Vision Enterprises as our inaugural leader worth following. So congrats to Valerie Grant. As well, I continue to say thanks to my awesome team, my core team, as well as those who supported on the day from university and college ambassadors. Senator the Honorable Royal Reed, who is a Minister of Education, Youth and Information in Jamaica, he gave opening remarks. I mean, we made the news on Power 106, got featured on JIS and so on. So it was a tremendous day. It was a tremendous success. And I thank all the stakeholders for making that happen. My name is Henny Kawaki Sporter, and you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn just by putting in Henny Kawaki Sporter. Remember, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. What good? 